Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I just wanted to uh, do a short video today, just to have a, a bit of a talk about the audio frequency amplifier that I intend to use um, for this little radio. Um, it's, a, it's an amplifier which I've used before and, uh, and certainly works uh, very well. So, um, like I say, I intend to use it again. So I've just been back through the circuit you know, just to make sure that uh, things were as good as I could get it and this is what I'll sort of talk about now. So um, the amplifier itself um, is made up of two stages. Um, I'll talk about the second stage first and come back to the first stage. Now, the second stage here is an LM380. It's a 2.5 watt audio um, uh, amplifier. Works really well driving uh, an 8 ohm 3 watt speaker. Um, the, the configuration of this particular amplifier here is straight out of the recommended circuit in the specification sheet. So uh, it works well, so um, might as well use it again. Um, the, the input to that is through a 10k ohm variable resistor. Uh, that's the same variable resistor that's on the front of the radio. Uh, for the purposes of, of testing here, uh, just using this little uh, trim pot, uh, what I'll do is I'll just switch in a, um, an equivalent resistor for the speaker just because it gets as you can imagine quite annoying um, so like I say for test purposes that's just a uh, a uh, 10k trim pot um, I'll talk about this capacitor in a sec uh, the input stage here is around an NE5534 that's a, a low noise uh, operational amplifier that uh, works well this particular amplifier typically uses a um, split power supply, so um, both a positive and a negative um, power supply. In this particular case I'm using a single-ended, so pin 4 is, is tied to ground uh, and the VCC rail is going up to our 13.8 volts. In order to, to use it in this particular configuration uh, and to get the maximum amount of output swing between that 0 volts and up to 13.8, roughly, um, I want to bias this to be halfway. To do that, I've taken the uh, the non-inverting input here, and I've tied its input to uh, halfway. So using two 10k ohm resistors as a voltage divider, uh, I've split that 13.8 into two, or by two, and feeding that into pin three. I selected two 10k ohm resistors just to minimise the current flow uh, through this voltage divider. Now the other key point here is just making sure that pin three here uh, is well grounded from an AC point of view. Uh, and I've done that using a 100 nanofarad capacitor. Uh, you'll note that um, at high uh, volume levels, if you disconnect that capacitor, any little bit of noise here gets amplified here, and soon it gets amplified through this, and you get quite a bit of noise on the output. So, but uh, like I say, uh, shorting that to ground from an AC point of view through that capacitor uh, just cleans it well up, just absolutely clean as a whistle. Uh, right, so in the terms of the configuration on the uh, the amplification factor, my thinking is um, I want to have this around that sort of two, three, four, five times voltage gain. Um, and my thinking there is once the radio is built, um, I'll put this in and I will adjust the, the feedback, and I'll look at that in a sec, uh, to get um, a nice clean output signal um, for a, a strong input signal. So that's my current thinking there. So the, the formula for this particular inverting operational amplifier is minus RF over RIN, where RF is our feedback resistor here, and RIN is our input resistance. In this particular case, I've fixed RIN to be 51 ohms, which is, is close, close to 50 ohms, and I've done that because of the high input impedance of this op-amp means that the, oh, as a result of that high input impedance, that the balanced uh, or the product detector, I should say, here, uh, is seeing a nice sort of 51 ohm uh, termination on that, so it's terminated well. So that's the case then, if I want to have a, a voltage gain, like I say, of that sort of 2, 3, 4, 5, and my RIN is now fixed at 51 ohms, therefore my feedback resistor needs to be in the, in the order of up to sort of 500 odd ohms. So for the purposes of test, um, I have in here now a, um, a 500 ohm trim pot, uh, which is that one right there. Uh, and just the last thing to mention is that 100, or say again, that 10 microfarad capacitor there. Uh, what I elected to do, uh, just using that sort of rule of thumb, is just making sure that the um, capacitive reactance at the lowest frequency of operation uh, is no greater than 100 ohms. 
So we know that xc equals 1 over 2 pi fc. So using that and rearranging that formula to make capacitor, the capacitance the subject, so moving that to the other side above the uh, equal sign and that to the lower side, we can then plug in our knowns. So 100 ohms times 2 pi times 300 hertz uh, under 1 comes out at 5.3 microfarads. Um, I'm just going to double that, so I'm going to use a, a 10 microfarad capacitor uh, because, as you can see from this formula here, any increase in capacitance results in a decrease in uh, capacitor reactance. In other words, um, I meet my requirements uh, even more, so to speak. So, uh, so yeah, so there you go. Um, why I've made that a, a trim pot, is we can see there that if we were to increase our, uh, our main volume here, that's the 10k ohm volume, and we were to have too much drive or too much amplification on that first stage, we can see that we start to get a little bit of uh, clipping there. And if I was to turn the speaker on, so it's going to be pretty noisy, you will certainly hear that noise as we start to clip. So sorry about the noise there. So uh, that's my thinking that once it's in circuit, I can then adjust that for a nice clean output uh, for a nice strong input, and therefore any weaker inputs. Um, I won't be overdriving the LM380 because I want to drive that reasonably hard um, for those, so I get a good volume level coming out of the, um, the speaker. Well, that's my thinking anyway. So, in terms of um, uh, frequency range for this, um, I note that, well, not I note, um, I'm conscious that the uh, the frequencies coming in from a single sideband are going to be constrained anyway because of the transmitter. Um, so I'm only going to be looking at somewhere between you know, 300 to uh, 3 kilohertz anyway. So um, I've elected right or wrong not to include in here any bandwidth determining uh, components. For example, an RC low pass filter. Um, I haven't got that anywhere in here. So I'm just going to leave this vanilla so to speak. Um, and whatever comes in is going to be amplified. Uh, I'm pretty happy that... Um, other than the audio frequency coming out of that product detector, the other components uh, or mixing components are going to be much higher anyway, so uh, they wouldn't find their way through this amplifier in the first place. So frequency wise, at the moment we're currently set up for uh, 1 kilohertz. Um, if we were just to decrease it down a little bit, down to 600, down to 300, uh, slight um, reduction in the, the amplitude as we sort of get below 500, but um, not too bad at all. And certainly now that's back to 1K there. Uh, and if we were to go one, uh, one two, three, um, flat as a pancake. Um, so that's really all I'm going to be seeing coming through anyway. Um, and it's pretty well up to that sort of 10K and it starts to drop off. Um, I'm not after a high fidelity 20 kilohertz amplifier here. I just do not need uh, that kind of flat bandwidth for that frequency range given that it's, uh, it's an SSB receiver constrained to that roughly 3 kilohertz anyway. So, like I say, for the, the frequency the frequency range that I'm after, it's, it's, it's close enough. Um, and I think that's all I wanted to talk about today. So, like I say, just a short video, nothing too special. Um, I find these two devices down here, the, the NE5534 and the LM380, uh, very easy to get here. So... Um, that sort of fits my criteria for this particular radio that the components are readily available and easy to um, obtain. Okay, that's what I'll say. Um, I'll now sort of shift my thinking towards uh, making up, once this, I've, I've soldered this up, uh, turn my attention to the, uh, the double balanced mixers. Um, the shock key diodes are turned up, so hopefully out of these 50 odd, um, I should be able to uh, get two lots of four reasonably close to uh, the forward voltage drops uh, at the required current. So that's the um, that's the, the next thing to, uh, to think about. Okay, I'll say 73, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Cheers all.